Hope you enjoyed that little segment there. So today we're going to be checking out the Manfrotto 190 tripod along with the Slick AMT. Today's goal ultimately is to try and get you guys to comment down below what tripod do you think works for you. Hello. Hello. Just kind of nice to meet you and me to do our photos. Plus it would look nice on her Instagram as well, like the same sort of thing I would on my Instagram. Uh, I don't know because mum did say to me that dinner was going to be ready in a moment. No way, where are we? Let's start with the Slick AMT. So the Slick AMT is a travel tripod. This is mainly due to its weight at 1.5 kilograms. Compare that to the Manfrotto at 2.55 kilograms. Clearly there's a significant difference in weight. For me personally, I would much prefer to take the AMT when I want to go out on a shoot, perhaps just even on holiday, but I wouldn't take a tripod on holiday. I actually bought the AMT last year on my trip to New York. I got this from B&H Photo and Video Store, but I've noticed recently they now don't sell them anymore. I bought the AMT for around 210 US dollars, which converts to around 171 pounds. So what do you get for 170 odd pounds? You get a spring-loaded fluid head, which always returns back to its original position and of course your main tripod legs. Well the company actually raves that it has super titanium alloy legs which has a 40% greater strength to weight ratio. Although it was 200 US dollars or 170 British pounds, it is feeling a little bit plasticky and sort of cheap for material. Calling these speed release locks is a bit of a debate. Now I tested this out and I put a timer on the clock I wasn't too sure about this myself. After using it for a fair few years, I noticed that it sort of becomes a bit of a hassle that you have to really dig your fingers into the legs to try and unlock them. This is a little bit annoying and also time consuming. And you almost have to push the lock all the way around just to be able to open the legs up more. Take that how you will. The Manfrotto locks I noticed have almost like this tiny little spring. Even just pushing the locks ever so slightly, it actually springs up. This tripod cost me 240 pounds and the fluid head cost me 140 pounds but you are paying for something that is strong durable and of professional quality not to mention Manfrotto's got a pretty good history of making good tripods so even when moving the Manfrotto tripod it stays pretty sturdy on the other hand the AMT isn't as sturdy and the legs are actually quite flexible the actual fluid head does work pretty well however I've noticed it's quite clunky and they could do with reducing the size of the handles. You can actually take apart the central column. This allows you to position your tripod at its lowest point to the ground. Manfrotto does go all the way down to the ground, however, you cannot take apart the central column, which is a little bit annoying. It doesn't quite beat the AMT to get in the lowest height. Now, an important thing to mention here, which I noticed on both the Manfrotto and the AMT, is they could both do with some hooks on that center column. I noticed a lot of tripods have this hook at the bottom where you can put your camera bag on there as a weight to hold your tripod down. AMT seems to have left a pre-drilled hole there so whether or not that's to put a hook inside who knows. It would make more sense for the AMT to have a hook seeing as it is a travel tripod and it's lightweight so therefore it's going to need something to hold it down. Now as for Manfrotto's special mechanism it allows the bar and the head to move into a horizontal position. They call this the one finger action. Oh god, I wouldn't be surprised if this video gets taken down. Now both tripods offer this portrait mode. The AMT just has a simple plate release where you can change it to 90 degrees. However, it's a little bit more complicated on the Manfrotto. For me personally, I don't use this feature very often, but I did use this mechanism in our last video, which was the photography challenge. I'll leave a link here if you haven't checked it out already. On the side of the tripod, it has an easy link attachment accessory. There's small little things like the little rubber head with the spirit gauge in there. Things like that aren't really necessary, especially when most of their fluid heads have a spirit level on there anyway. Unlike the AMT, Manfrotto fluid head doesn't spring back. I guess this isn't a massive thing for me, but it's always nice to see the small things being added in there. Pushing the legs all the way in is no problem, but you do have to put a bit of effort into pushing the locks down. Well, there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, then why not hit that like button? And whilst you're here on my channel, why not check out the Nintendo Switch unboxing review? Or perhaps you could check out the new podcast, The Media Discussion. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.